Hello, and welcome to Coin Stories, an interview series dedicated to learning about Bitcoin, the world of crypto, and digital currencies, explained through the eyes of some of the most influential voices in the space. They've been in Bitcoin for years, and in that time, it's had booms and busts, but they remain steadfast in their belief that this technology will change our lives. And while right now we are seeing a correction, Bitcoin remains up hundreds of percent since last year, and these advocates all remain undeterred in their commitment to crypto. I'm Natalie Brunel, and I'm a journalist based in LA. You may know me from my other podcast, Career Stories. Like many of you listening, I don't have a background in finance or cryptocurrency, but I am passionate about learning the best ways to save and invest my money. I first dipped my toes in Bitcoin back in 2017, not really understanding it or knowing much about it. But when the pandemic hit and the market crashed along with Bitcoin, I began to spend a lot of my free time educating myself about the stock market, the history of money and central banking, global economics, and of course, Bitcoin. I think I read The Bitcoin Standard by Saifedina Moose three times. I highly recommend it if you're interested in this space. Learning about Bitcoin has been fascinating, intimidating, and it's changed my perspective on my life and my financial future. Just for some quick background on me, my family is first generation in the US and money was tight growing up. I was raised with the values of hard work and saving as much as you can. My family came here like so many, just wanting a better life and to be part of the American middle class. But fast forward not that many years and if you're in the so-called middle class, it's harder and harder to afford what previous generations could, especially for millennials. It seems like no matter how much you try to save, it's just never enough. So I was really fascinated by the opportunity Bitcoin presented as the first digital form of sound, scarce money that can't be overinflated or corrupted and is available to everyone. Many of its supporters refer to it as a savings technology where your money should be enough. If you put it away to save, it shouldn't be devalued just sitting in a bank account. Now it is volatile. This is no surprise to the people who are Bitcoin evangelists. It is shocking for investors who are new or FOMO'd and bought it when it climbed to over $60,000. But Elon Musk, this too shall pass. In this podcast, you'll hear from some of the most recognized and followed names in this space, including Plan B, Robert Breedlove, Anthony Pompliano, Raul Paul, and more. And we'll talk about their backstories, how they came to discover Bitcoin, and their take on the philosophy behind this growing digital asset. Whether you're new to Bitcoin or a devotee and already follow the big voices, you'll get something out of this series. And if you're super new to Bitcoin, I was there and I know what it's like to have some of the terminology go over my head. So I created a glossary to help fill in some of the gaps. Bitcoin is a scarce digital currency that is decentralized. It's not under the control of any government, entity, or corporation. You can buy, sell, or exchange it directly without an intermediary like a bank. Satoshi Nakamoto is essentially the father of Bitcoin. That's the name used by the pseudonymous person or group that conceived of Bitcoin and released the so-called white paper introducing Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system on October 31st, 2008. If you recall, that was at the peak of the US great financial crisis. A Satoshi is also a division of a Bitcoin. One Bitcoin is equal to 100 million Satoshis, also known as sats, which is why there's a famous saying in Bitcoin world you might have heard, stacking sats, which means accumulating the smallest unit of a Bitcoin. Blockchain is the technology that enables Bitcoin. It's essentially a digital ledger of transactions and the entire network has a copy of it. It is distributed across all the computer systems on the blockchain. A full node is a computer in Bitcoin's network which hosts and synchronizes a copy of the entire blockchain ledger. Bitcoin mining is the process of verifying blocks of Bitcoin transactions. Now this is a critical aspect in the development and maintenance of the blockchain ledger. It's also the process by which new Bitcoins are minted and entered into circulation. Think of a Bitcoin miner though as a computing device, not a person. Miners use a system called proof of work to verify transactions. Proof of work is the algorithm that secures Bitcoin. It's all about decentralization, verification, and consensus. So how it works is miners use extremely large amounts of computing power to solve very complex mathematical puzzles. These computer systems compete with each other to solve them. The miners then have to reach a consensus to verify the puzzle was solved 
and then they can accept the block and permanently record it onto the blockchain ledger. Proof of work ensures the security of the blockchain and complete decentralization of the process. It prevents attacks and things like double spending. No person, entity, or country controls Bitcoin. Instead, Bitcoin is controlled by verifiable software systems and processes. Now, when a miner solves a puzzle and that work and those transactions are confirmed, the miner is paid a reward in new Bitcoins according to a schedule. Every four years, the amount of Bitcoins the miners receive for each block of transactions is reduced by 50%. These events are referred to as halvings. The next halving will happen in 2024 and they typically coincide with a large rise in the price. Proof of stake doesn't apply to Bitcoin, but it's also something you should know. It differs from proof of work in that instead of putting up large, powerful computing systems, it's based on validators who stake their own currency in the mining process. It's more energy efficient, but it can lead to centralization because people who have more coins to put up or stake can verify more transactions. Proof of stake is almost a hybrid between the absolute decentralization of Bitcoin and the absolute centralization of government money. Digital scarcity refers to the limited availability of a virtual good or resource that cannot be easily copied or emulated. Bitcoin was designed to have a hard supply cap of 21 million coins that will ever be mined. And because of decentralization, that can never be changed no matter how high the price per Bitcoin goes. Absolute scarcity is an entirely new concept and it's important because it guarantees that no one can create new coins that will dilute the value of existing coins. Fiat refers to currency that is established as money or legal tender by government decree or regulation. More simply, fiat is basically government-issued money and almost all currencies around the world are fiat currencies. Fiat money gives central banks greater control over the economy because they control how much money is printed. Fiat money is 100% centralized because it is entirely controlled by the government. The printing of new money to finance government